Hi, I'm John from Rimmers Music. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about effects, loops and signal chains. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is effects chains and just signal chains in general. Um, so these are the kind of generalised rules that you will apply towards having your pedal board and your rig to just get the, the optimum sound quality out of it. Uh, so typically at the very start you'll normally have your chromatic tuner which is this one right here we use that to tune in and just fine tune but the reason why you'll have one of them at the front of your signal chain is really you want the cleanest purest signal going in so you can get the most accurate tuning out of your guitar that you possibly could get um, after that you'd have stuff like um, like pitch modulation so you'd have like harmony pedals um, any kind of octave pedals something like that um, and that's really because before anything else in the signal chain, even if you're adding a little bit of distortion or anything like that, you want the harmony to be on point and um, you want it to be precise. You don't want anything to really get in the way of that um, because, of course, adding the overdrive afterwards will just kind of make it ring a little bit better for you. Um, after that, you'll have stuff like your kind of distortion pedals and overdrive pedals. Um, and again, it's it's so you've got a really clean signal going into it. Um, maybe it's modulated slightly pitch-wise, but um, it, it still gives you a really nice kind of tone to it. So after your kind of distortion effects and your game based effects, um, you'll go towards slightly less drastic modulation effects. So with the harmonist, with the octave pedals, what they're doing is they're changing the overall pitch. Whereas with something like say a chorus pedal, that'll just kind of waver the pitch that you're on. So it, it's not as drastically changing the tone of the guitar as what one of them other effects would do. Um, so here's my kind of clean signal and then when I've got the chorus on there so you can see it just wavers a little bit and then the reason why you'd have that afterwards is because you'll have a clean gain based signal coming through or distorted effect and then you're just slightly modulating the distortion so that'll give you kind of a crunchy tone so if I have the chorus effect and I put a little bit of um, like a game based effect on it, it'll give me quite a quite kind of chunky tone, the waver slightly. <laughs> After our kind of less drastic modulation effects, um, we go through to our time based effects, which is stuff like your reverbs, your delays, and stuff like that. Now, reverb is basically like capturing the ambience of a hall, a cathedral, or a church, and having it literally in your guitar. So it takes a signal from that to well, you can see it's it's quite a change. Um, it's useful for just kind of thickening out a guitar line, making it pop a little bit more, so if it's just one guitar, it can make it sound a little bit bigger and a little bit thicker. So you can see what the, what the reverb's done there. Um, after the reverb typically you'll have the delay now the reason for that is basically with the delay what that's doing that's different to a reverb effect is that's taking in the data that you're processing and it's repeating it a certain amount of time so you can level you can edit the levels and parameters like how many repeats it does or for how long or every millisecond or stuff like that and um, but typically with a delay pedal you want it at the very end of your signal chain just so that basically you can kind of put your effects through 
and every effect that's getting used at that time is being repeated as opposed to a dry signal being repeated if it was say at the front and then the effects coming on afterwards because it can make it sound a little muddy and everything will get lost and um, so this is what a delay pedal sounds like so just doing something really simple where you're just kind of scratching the string how it kind of adds a little bit more effect to it. from the chorus just to show like kind of a general overview of what sort of thing you can do with a pedal board like this and um, you can have kind of your delay effect as, as we'll just add with the chorus again maybe add a little bit of reverb and then you can kind of just play about with it from there and just improv and see what kind of tones you can get from it <laughs> signal chain that's the kind of tones that you can get and um, now just to end off our little kind of pedal board that we've got on the go uh, we've got a looper so basically the way a looper will work whatever data you're putting in before that in the signal chain it will replicate it for you it repeats it back you can stop it you can start it but typically if you want to play in a little t little kind of riff and then maybe have a little solo over the top stuff like that one of them is what you'd use it for and um, now the reason we have a at the very end in the signal chain is because if you want to put maybe that kind of that riff that we've just been doing say i wanted to play that in but then i wanted the clean signal over the top without the delay without the chorus and um, just with a little bit of distortion to solo over the top you can really see how it all comes together at the end um so i'll do a little demo of that for you now Basically, in a nutshell, that's the way that your signal chains will typically run. Um, and now I'll begin to talk about effects loops on amps. So, now we're going to talk about effects loops. So, we've had our signal chain, we know kind of what order things should go in to make it a really nice, well rounded sound and get the best sound quality out of your rig. There's two ways you can connect up your pedals now. So, you can go the standard way which is your guitar goes into your chromatic tuner or whatever's first in the signal chain and then from that it goes straight through all your pedals comes out and goes straight into the input of the amplifier and that's probably the most common way to connect up your uh, your pedal rig um, the other way to do it is say you're that guy who's decided no I like my amps distortion I want to keep with that and I want to maybe add a little bit of delay and use a, a delay pedal 
Now, that would mean putting the delay at the front of the signal chain if you were to connect it up that way, which would make it sound a little bit muddy and it puts the delay before your distortion, so you're just delaying a clean guitar, basically. The best way to set that up would be to find an effects loop that's built into the back of quite a lot of amplifiers that are different. Um, right, so... If we think of our amplifier as two separate sections, so you've got your preamp section, which is the home of all your kind of your distortions, your reverbs, any other kind of effects your amp may have. Then you've got your power amp section. Your power amp section is basically what drives the speaker and what produces the sound that your amplifier makes. Um, whatever you put in between that, that makes it your tone sort of thing, which is really great. Now, the way to get around using a distortion after a delay in the signal chain would be to use the effects loop. So the way we use that is on the back of this amplifier, um, there is effects send and effects return. So what that means is you're sending from the preamp, you're sending the signal through, and then you're returning the signal back to the amp. Now what that's gonna do is basically, um, because nothing's going into the input just yet, that's sending whatever effects are in the amp to the front of our signal chain. Then it's sending through all your effects in your pedal board, returning it to the amp to then go through to the power amp and produce your sound. So the best way to do that would be um, plug your guitar in to your input, the same as you normally would, and then have your effects loop running. And then basically whatever effects you apply on the amp will come right the way through to the end of the signal chain. Now the best way to showcase this would be to use maybe a bit of distortion and delay, or maybe a bit of distortion and a looper, because obviously if you have the looper in before the amp's distortion, then you wouldn't hear it. However, if you use the looper after that, then it would be created perfectly for you. So I'll just start off, do a little bit of delay, and start off a loop, and then maybe put a little bit of distortion onto it, and you'll see how the effects chain runs a lot smoother, and as it would if it was connected straight through the input but to more effect because I'm using amp distortion instead of pedal distortion. So. than if I had the delay in first at the start. So, I've been John from Rimmers Music looking at our signal chains and effects paths. If you've got any further questions, don't hesitate to contact us on Facebook or on our website, rimmersmusic.co.uk. See you next time.